Hey everybody, it's James. How you doing today? We have a Patreon poll pick today, and it was presidential slash political, and the movie was Lincoln. Uh, what do I know about Lincoln? I'm assuming we're talking about Abraham. And if we're talking about Abraham Lincoln, I know a little bit. Uh, I've read uh, at least, I think, one uh, biography about Lincoln. Uh, I don't remember it very well. It was probably 15 years ago. So maybe this will come up with some recollection, like all like, you know, recollect some things from it. But um, I don't know. I, I, I'm very favorable towards Lincoln being one of our better presidents that uh, ever existed. It was horrible that he was shot and killed. It was just a bunch of, you know, nutters <laughs> is a good way to put it. I mean, it was during the, you know, slavery thing and civil war and there was a lot of turmoil. And so, you know, it's pretty predictable that something like that's going to happen. But um, yeah, I'm actually really interested in seeing this. I'm hoping it's just um, a really well done biography of him and, and what he achieved and the type of person he was. Um, so we'll have to see how this turns out. But um, if you want to help pick which movies I watch, check out my Patreon. It's uh, not expensive at all, and um, there's a lot of stuff out there. Two years worth of content and a ton of not on YouTube content that's like full reactions that I just haven't gotten around to editing and some things like that. I've got probably like 30 movies out there that I've seen but haven't been edited at this point. And I'm sorry, if you don't know who I am, my name is James. I am an ex-Iowa farmer who grew up in the middle of nowhere and uh, only had three channels on my TV. So we just, we didn't watch it. And I became a massive bookworm and have been for 30 years uh, or plus, 30 years plus. And uh, my oldest children, uh, they convinced me to catch up on pop culture and start watching all these awesome U.S. movies. Um, because I just I don't know who actors are and what their life's work is and stuff like that. I'm like a huge fan of Tom Hanks now and his, you know, like huge catalog of work. I've still got more to watch. I think I've watched like 10 of his films. Um, and uh, yeah, come with me on my journey. Subscribe, like, channel. You know, let's uh, build this up. We're trying to get to 25,000 subscribers. That would be really great. And uh, yeah, let's just get uh, into Lincoln. It's very early. It's about, I don't know, 5.15 a.m. recording this. I'm an early riser. I can't. <laughs> I've been like that my whole life. I can't get over it. Probably part of the farming aspect. We wake up early. Oh, yeah. Civil War. A lot of hand to hand and just God drowning people and just oh wow. Some of us was in the second Kansas colored. We fought the Rebs at Jenkins Ferry last April, just after they killed every Negro soldier they captured at Poison Springs. Oh my goodness. We decided we weren't taking no Reb prisoners, and we didn't leave one of them alive. Wow. What's your name, soldier? Harold Green, sir. And making three dollars less each month. Than white soldiers. Well, Equal pay strange. now, but still no commissioned Negro officers. I'm aware of that, Corporal Clark. Maybe in a few years they can abide the idea of Negro lieutenants and captains. In yes. 15 years, maybe a Negro colonel. Oh, love it. What would you do after the war? Work, sir. You should know, sir, that I get sick at the smell of boot black and I cannot cut hair. I've yet to find a man who could cut mine so it would make any difference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My last barber hanged himself. Left me his scissors in his will. <laughs> we saw you, right? We, yeah, we heard you speak. We had ah, damn, damn. Uh, hey, how tall are you anyway? Oh, gee, shut up. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth from this continent a new nation conceived in liberty to be dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. That's good. Thank you. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. Oh, I love it. We don't speak like this anymore. Boys, best go and find your company. That we here highly resolve that these oh, dead he, shall not have died in vain. He knew it. <laughs> that government of the people. Oh, I'm going to love this. Very powerful. 
two months passed since Abraham Lincoln's re-election. The American Civil War is now in its fourth year. Such atrocities. I should spare you, Molly. I shouldn't tell you my dreams. I don't want to be spared if you aren't. It's a forest, Mom! You dream about the shit before a battle, usually. How's the coconut? How's her head? Almost two years, nothing mends. Oh, and she was in Mrs. Doubtfire, too. That was a great one. The whole time? Listen to a useless... <laughs> I know what it's about, the ship. It's not a military campaign. It's the amendment to abolish slavery. Oh. You're going to try to get the amendment passed in the House of Representatives? Holy yeah. crap, is he tall. So, do you remember Roberts coming home for the reception? I knew you'd forget. I thought he was like 6'4 or something like that. That's the ship yeah. you're sailing on. The 13th Amendment. You needn't tell me I'm right. I know I am. Kids on the floor. Lots of carpet. Hardwood is cold, and when the whole house isn't heated like ours, you have to keep things warm. Carpet's pretty good insulator. I was doing a battle. You see his little creatures down there? These are children that are for sale. Ugh. Slavery's a horrible thing. <laughs> Yeah, that's where his notes were in his hat. I know that. <laughs> Part assigned to me is to raise the flag. And when up, it'll be for the people to keep it up. That's my speech. <laughs> that's a short speech. I don't know this song. Even if every Republican in the House votes yes, we'd still be 20 votes short. You can find 20 votes. 20 House Democrats who will vote to abolish slavery, in my opinion. To which I always listen. We'll win the war, sir. Well, it ain't won yet. Imagine the possibilities peace will bring. Why tarnish your invaluable luster with a battle in the House? It's such a backwards way of thinking, to tarnish it. We need Democratic support. There's been an election. 64 Democrats looking for work come March. I know. Oh, ho. Mr. and Mrs. Jolly, who've come from Missouri. From Jeff City. This year by the fire is Secretary of State Seward. Oh, Secretary of State. Jeff City. I heard tell once of a, a Jefferson City lawyer who had a parrot. I'd wake him each morning, crying out, Today is the day the world shall end. And uh, one day, the lawyer shot him. Ah! For the sake of peace and quiet, I presume. <laughs> his prophecy. Yeah, huh? Do you know about the proposed 13th Amendment? You know that it abolishes slavery. Yes, sir, I know it. And is that why you favor it? We do away with slavery, the Rebs will quit fighting. Okay, so they're more concerned about the war ending. If the rebels surrendered next week, would you, at the end of this month, want Congressman Burton to vote for the 13th Amendment? So he's really pressuring her. Mr. Jolly much prefer not to have Congress pass the amendment. He's trying to prove a point. Would you let me study this letter, sir, about the toll booth? And we'll consider what the law says. Wouldn't that be nice if just the president just opened his doors to concerns of the world from the normal man and woman? The procuring votes with offers of employment is what you intend. I'll fetch a friend from Albany. Okay. Pardon me, that's a distress signal. Which I am bound by solemn oath to respond to. <laughs> you can't afford a single defection from anyone in the party. Boy, he's really a naysayer. You need us to keep the conservative side of the party in the traces where you diddle the radicals and bundle up with Thaddeus Stevens' gang. You need our help. Well, what do we get? Do you get free slavery? They taught me a song. Did they? <laughs> How's your brother, Bob? He's at school now, but he's coming to visit in four days. Good he's not in the army. <laughs> He wants to be, but Mama said he can't. Dangerous not. life, soldiering. Yes, it is. Now give me terms I can offer to Jefferson Davis to start negotiating for peace. They'll vote for this rash and dangerous amendment only if every other possibility is exhausted. They, uh, they're trying to find a way out of it, basically. 100 miles to Richmond. Get him drunk so he can sleep. Get him drunk so he can sleep. Go make peace. Get him drunk so he can sleep. We'll commence our assault on Wilmington from the sea. Oh, I know him. 58 ships are underway. 58 ships. Our first target is Fort Fisher. It defends Wilmington Fort. A steady barrage. 100 shells a minute. Wow. Dear God. Wilmington Falls. Richmond Falls after. We're watching history. And just the, just the scale of it. Melissa Goings. They said she murdered her husband. He was 83. 
fractured his skull and he died. In his will, he wrote, I expect she has killed me. <laughs> I highly suspect she killed me. I asked the prosecuting attorney if I might have a short conference with my client. The window in the room is found to be wide open. It was believed oh, she the escaped. may have climbed out of it. The Constitution gives me war powers. But no one knows just exactly what those powers are. Which, I decided, meant that I could take the rebel slaves from them as property confiscated in war. Wow, the politics behind it. Now, here's where it gets truly slippery. The South ain't a nation. That's why I can't negotiate with them. So if, in fact, the Negroes are property according to law, have I the right to take the rebels' property from them if I insist they're rebels only and not citizens of a belligerent country? And they're not a country. That means that since it's states' laws that determine whether Negro slaves is property, the federal government doesn't have a say in that. Man. But if I'm a respecter of states' laws, how then can I legally free him with my proclamation as I've done? Unless I'm canceling states' laws. I felt the war demanded it. Might those people I freed be ordered back into slavery? That's why I'd like to get the 13th Amendment through the House right. and on its way to ratification. And I'd like you to stand behind me like my cabinet's most always done. Valid. Lawyered. <laughs> well, Mr. Representative Ashley, we want you to bring the anti-slavery amendment to the floor for debate. It's not going to be easy, but we it's trust impossible. You. Not impossible. We've been chasing this whale for a long time. We finished the deed now. We can't wait. Right. Push it forward. He's using the threat of the amendment to frighten the rebels into an immediate surrender. Why are we cooperating with with him? He's your president. You said we all know what he'll do. I don't know. Oh, I know him. Tommy Lee. <sighs> Nothing surprises you, Lisa. I'm going home. I saw Tommy Lee in the um, Men in Black and The Fugitive. The president's never to be mentioned. Nor I. You're paid for your discretion. Congressman, come cheap. A few thousand bucks will buy you all you need. The president would be unhappy to hear you did that. Uh -huh. Should we get to work? Yeah, whack it. <laughs> whack it. Whack that. Crap. I've never done that. I've always wanted a whack of crab. Two bloody years ago this month, His Highness King Abraham Africanus the First, violator of habeas corpus. And if rights. Lincoln really were a tyrant, Mr. Wood, he'd have had your empty head impaled on a pike. Correct. <laughs> Radical Republican autocrat. New York delegation's looking decidedly uninspired. Well, the son of liberty of some bitch. John can't Ellis is gonna. Yeah. But it shall not pass. Yeah. A point of order, Mr. Speaker, if you please. This Some of us breathe oxygen. <laughs> and we find the mephitic fumes of his oratory a lethal challenge to our pulmonary. <laughs> <laughs> what violates natural law? Slavery. And you, Pendleton, you insult God. You unnatural noise. <laughs> oh my god! He's got a donkey in the hunk! Look at Hi, Mom. Oh, Poppy. Hey. Poppy. Hey. You forget to eat. <laughs> exactly like him. No. We'll fatten you up before you return to Boston. Oh, uh, okay. Jefferson Davis is sending three delegates coming in earnest to propose peace. Oh, peace. Oh, this is unwelcome news for you. Yeah, no, he wants the 13th Amendment before the war ends. Think of all the boys who die if you don't make peace. Yeah. I will procure your votes for you as I promised. I beg you. In the name of gentle Christ, I understand. Sir, uh, talk peace with these men. He's going to have to talk to them. Despite our abstention to reach a two thirds majority, we remain 20 yeses short for which we're seeking from among 64 lame duck Democrats. Fully 39 of these we deem unredeemable no votes. Oh, jeez. The remaining lame ducks on whom we've been working with a purpose. Charles Hanson. Congressman. Giles Stewart. Well, we're trying to get him jobs for votes. <laughs> Nelson Merrick. Whoa, look at the foot. That's interesting how they were showing that off. Homer Benson. Clay Hawkins of Ohio. Take it to me. Peasant. Uh, same they make me sick. That's not a peasant. Assistant port inspector. Stomach. What kind of bird is that? 
At least Bez doesn't hunt up here. Scatter them over several rounds of appointments so no one notices and burn this ledger, please, after you're done. Burn the ledger. Uh huh. One last item. Why My are the window open? That among the representatives, a fantastical rumors brooded about that you'd allowed bleary old Preston Blair to sojourn to Richmond to invite Jeff Davis to send commissioners up to Washington. Oh, uh, yeah. Not without consulting me, you wouldn't. His poor feelings got hurt. No man's land. Interesting. Trading something. Some type of lettering or information between the two parties. Senator Hunter of Congress, Confederate State. Judge. Assistant Secretary of War. Vice President of Confederate State. Much obliged. Why wasn't I consulted? I'm Secretary of State. What will happen, do you imagine, when these peace commissioners arrive? We'll hear them out. Oh. Yeah, talk to them. We'll lose every Democrat we've got. Blair's a promise support for the amendment if we listen to these people. Oh, the Blair's promise, do they? Their proposal most certainly will be predicated on keeping their slaves. What hope for any Democratic votes? Oh, man. The, the seesaw, right? Word How to distribute out? the weight. It's either the amendment or this Confederate peace. You cannot have both. Get me 13 votes. Them fellas from Richmond ain't here yet. How long of a journey is it? They're in Virginia now. You drafted half the men in Boston to pay me. Put them back in the box, you scoundrel. He got him some more plates. You should go to Mrs. Lincoln. She's in Willie's room. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, what's going on See, with Mrs. Lincoln? I'll be the only man over 15, under 65 in this whole place, not in uniform. I'm under 15. He's in uniform? <laughs> oh, do they have a child they lost? My head hurts so I prayed for death the night Willie died. How to endure the long afternoon? How will I manage? Somehow. Somehow. She's still in mourning. Horrible mourning. He was a very sick little boy. We should have canceled that reception, shouldn't we? Well, we didn't know how sick he was, I knew. I knew. You can't do this to yourself. These what ifs will kill you. It's too hard. Yeah. Grand reception, January 15th. Mrs. Lincoln. Madam President, if you please. Don't convene another subcommittee to investigate me, sir. I'm teasing. As long as your household accounts are in order, madam, we'll have no need to investigate them. The miracles I have wrought. I have fertilizer bills and cutlery invoices, but I... She can hold her own. They will never love you the way they love him. How difficult it must be for you to know that. And yet how important to remember it. Oh, she's fierce, man. <laughs> this is the face of someone who has fought long and hard for the good of the people without caring much for any of them. I lead. You ought to try it. If I'd listened to you, I'd have declared every slave free the minute the first shell struck Fort Sumter. You claim you trust them, but you know what the people are. You know that the inner compass that should direct the soul toward justice has ossified in white men and women, north and south, unto utter uselessness through tolerating the evil of slavery. White people cannot bear the thought of sharing this country's infinite abundance with Negroes. Uh, I love the words used. It'll point you true north from where you're standing, but it's got no advice about the swamps. Deserts and chasms that you all encounter along the way. If in pursuit of your destination you plunge ahead heedless of obstacles and achieve nothing more than to sink in a swamp, what's the use of knowing true north? Ah, uh, ah, uh, love this. Just the way they talk and the way they just meander through the conversations with such thought. Too young for the army. There's plenty of boys younger than Robert signing up. Don't take Robbie. Go away! Secretary Stanton has sent over to tell you that as of half an hour ago, the shelling of Wilmington Harbor has commenced. Oh, okay. They've taken 17,000 shells since yesterday. Not Coming out, you old rat! What? That's what Ethan Allen called out to the commander of Fort Tyke under Roger in 1776. There is one Ethan Allen story that I'm no. very partial to. No, you're, you're going to tell a story. Uh -huh. I don't believe that I can bear to listen to another one of your stories right now! <laughs> 
<laughs> it was right after the revolution, right after. It's so funny. No more stories. I love the stories. Mr. Allen found he needed the privy. On entering the water closet, that the only decoration therein was a, a portrait of George Washington. Ethan Allen done what he came to do. And finally, his lordship couldn't resist and asked Mr. Allen had he noticed it, the picture of Washington he had. Well, what did he think of its placement? Did it seem appropriately located to Mr. Allen? Oh, for, for what reason? George Washington's likeness in a water closet? Yes, said Mr. Allen, where it'll do good service. The whole world knows nothing to make an Englishman shit quicker than the sight of George Washington. Yeah! <laughs> Has it fallen? Fort Fisher is ours. We've taken the port. Yeah! <laughs> the city of Wilmington has not surrendered. How many casualties? A lot, probably. Fort Wilmington? A lot. Yeah. Losses. And more to come. This is to the death. It's gruesome. They're busily buying votes. What, we hope to be saved by the national mood? Democrats are getting worried. Bring Stevens to full froth. I can ensure that every newspaperman from Louisville to San Francisco will be here to witness it and print it. They said this... This thought that just by freeing slaves that they'll be millionaires for some reason. Give me a break. They're still impoverished people. To announce that I'm opposed to the amendment. We must consider what will become of colored folk if four million are in one instant set free. They'll be free, George. That's what will become of them. <laughs> yeah, right. Bless my eyes if it isn't the postmaster of Millersburg, Ohio. Mr. Leclerc felt honor-bound to inform us that I'm here disgusting betrayal, prostitution. Your maidenly virtue for sale. My neighbors hear that I voted yes for freedom. In note of peace, they will kill me. Wait, you want to, what was it? A tax man for the Western Reserve? How are you going to have the whole state of Ohio if you want? Crap. Lost him. Think of a Bob Hollister, dem from Indiana. I approached him, some bitch near to murdered me. Literally. <laughs> Literally tried to kill him. We are at an impasse. Tell Lincoln to deny the rumors. Is there a Confederate offer or not? <clears throat> no. No, not yet. Ulysses S. Grant. I suggest you work some changes to your proposal before you give it to the president. It says securing peace for our two countries, and it goes on like that. Oh, There's it's not just one country. Th yeah, it's one country. We are not to discuss the truce between warring nations. What in heaven's name can we discuss? Terms of surrender. They're losing. President. I will be sorry should it prove impossible for you to have an interview with them. After four years of war... They have to wear so many layers to stay warm. He believes we can end this war now. My trust in him is marrow deep. You can bring the delegates to Washington. In exchange for the South's immediate surrender, we could promise them the amendment's defeat. Not what he wants. Within 10 days time, we might pass the 13th amendment. 10 days. Delay, delay, delay. Pass the amendment. Then end the war. Here's a 16 year old boy. We're gonna hang him. What time is it? It's 3.40 in the morning. Yeah, constantly working. Mr. Stanton thinks you pardon too many. Well, you don't just hang a 16-year-old boy for Ask that. Ask the horse what he thinks. Cruelty, there'd be no 16-year-old boys left. Wouldn't you pardon the 16-year-old? War's nearly done. What use one more corpse? Any more corpses? Pardon them all. Lieutenant General Ulysses S. Grant, you maintain among your troops military preparedness for battle, as you have done until now. Let Captain Saunders convey the commissioners to me here in Washington. Should I transmit, sir? Ah! Oh my god, it's Kylo Ren! <laughs> Are we fitted to the times we're born into? What do you reckon? Well, I'm an engineer. You must know Euclid's axioms and common notions. I read Euclid. Little enough ever found its way in here, but once learned, it stayed learned. Once learned, it stayed learned. I wish I could say that. You see, there it is, even in that 2,000-year-old book of mechanical law. It is a self-evident truth that things which are equal to the same thing are equal to each other. We begin with equality. Mm. That's fairness. That's justice. Slight emendation, if you would, Sam. Emendation.
Have Captain Saunders convey the gentlemen aboard the River Queen and their wait until further advice from me. Do not proceed to Washington. Delay. That's what that was. Delay them. End days. Delay them for the boat. Just a reminder that I'm offering a seven day free trial to new Patreons. That is where you can find all my full reactions and this exclusive content. House Representatives, January 27th. Say you believe only in legal equality for all races, not racial equality, I beg you, sir. Oh, President's wife. Do you or do you not hold that the precept that all men are created equal is meant literally? The true purpose of the amendment. Come on. Moment in history, talk. I don't hold with equality in all things, only with equality before the law and nothing more. He's answered your questions. This amendment's not to do with race equality. How can I hold that all men are created equal when here before me stands stinking the moral carcass of the gentleman from Ohio, endowed by their maker with dim wits? <laughs> Even worthless, unworthy you ought to be treated equally before the law. And so again, sir, and again, and again. I do not hold with equality in all things, only with equality before the law. Okay. Try to make it not about race, just about the fact that everyone is equal when it comes to the law. Of every hope for this country's future life, you denied Negro equality. Have you lost your very soul, Mr. Stevens? I want the amendment to pass. Correct. So the Constitution's first and only mention of slavery is its absolute prohibition and for which countless colored men and women have fought and died and now hundreds of thousands of soldiers. Whatever it takes, the greater good, right? I'm not going in. You said you wanted to help me. I've been to army hospitals. I've seen surgeries. I went and visited the malaria barges with mama. I've seen what it's like. This change is nothing. Not all rage, I'm, I'm happy to have your company. Come with. Robert, good to meet you, Robert. Two legs missing, legs missing, man. Blood. Oh no, they're just gonna dump it into a river or something. Oh my god. It's just legs and arms. Yeah, no. <laughs> What's the matter, Bob? I have to do this, and I will do it. I'm Commander-in-Chief. So in point of fact, without my permission, you ain't enlisting in nothing, nowhere, young man. It's Mama you're scared of. It's not me getting killed. Oh! I have to do this, and I will. I won't be you, Pa. I can't do that, but I don't want to be nothing. He has passion. You'll be fine, Molly. The war will take our son. Same as took Willie, it takes hundreds of boys a day. How will I ever forgive you? It's not him making the decision. Robert will never forgive himself. You imagine he'll forgive us if we continue to stifle this very natural ambition. Right. For everybody's goddamn sake, I should have clapped you in the madhouse. Then do it. You'll have to, I swear. If Robert is killed. Oh. I couldn't tolerate you grieving so for Willie because I couldn't permit it in myself, though I wanted to marry. Of course he did. Don't speak to me about grief. I must make my decisions. Bob must make his, you yours, and... He's a grown man. He has to make his own decisions. Whether you like those decisions or not. No one has ever lived who knows better than you the proper placement of footfalls on treacherous paths. You will answer to me. <laughs> oh, how we fear our wives' retribution. <laughs> I know your concern. Thank you for your concern over this. And I want you to know they'll approve it. God will see to it. Oh. I don't envy him his task. I wish he'd chosen an instrument for his purpose more wielding in the House of Representatives. And you'll see to it. Oh. <laughs> White people don't want us here. Many don't. What about you? I don't know you, Mrs. Keckley. You're familiar to me as all people are. You have a right to expect what I expect. I assume I'll get used to you. My son died fighting for the Union. For freedom he died. But I'm his mother. That's 
what I am to the nation, Mr. Lincoln. What else must I be? Oh. Whoever wrote this is just, oh, dabbing me. It's just the words pierce your soul. Well, I'll be. Oh! <laughs> Why are you here? No offense, but Mr. Seward's banished the very mention of your name. He won't even let us use 50 cent pieces because they got your face on them. <laughs> 11 Democrats in the bag. That's encouraging. The Democrats we've yet to bag, sir. The patronage job simply won't bag them. They require more convincing. Tell Governor Curtin, it'd be much yeah. appreciated if he'd invite the House of Representatives to decide who won. And advise Karfroth, if he hopes to retain his seat, that he better pay a visit to Thaddeus Stevens. It opens. It opens. <laughs> Karfroth, Mr. Stevens. A Republican and you, Karfroth, are a Democrat? Mm. The Democratic Party. You are a dem o crat What's the matter with you? Are you wicked? Are you wicked? I know what I must do, sir. I will immediately become a Republican and vote yes for it. Oh, yes. Kofroff will vote yes, but Kofroff will remain a Democrat until after he does so. Why wait to switch? I'm happy to we switch. We want to show the amendment has bipartisan support. You. Okay. Parties. Now, congratulations on your victory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that man just got handled. Holy crap. I can't vote for the amendment. I saw a barge once, Mr. Yeaman, filled with colored men in chains. It sickened me. Slavery troubled me as long as I can remember. In a way, it never troubled my father. He wasn't a kind man, but there was a rough moral urge for fairness, for mm. freedom in him. But we're entirely unready for emancipation. Questions. We're unready for peace, too, ain't we? <laughs> oh. Yeah, when it comes, it'll present us with conundrums and dangers greater than any we faced during the war. We'll have to extemporize and experiment. Yes, exactly. We must jump into the lake. What's before us now, that's the vote on the 13th Amendment. It's going to be so very close. Everyone, everyone vote. No matter their race, gender, or likelihood. Let them all vote, as long as they are a U.S. citizen of this nation. We've managed our members to a fairly well. You've had no defections from the Republican right to trouble you. Well, so what you promised? Where the hell are the commissioners? You lied to me, Mr. Lincoln. You evaded my request for a denial that, that there is a Confederate peace offer because, because there is... There is no peace offer. Oh, state by state, you can extra... I can't listen to this anymore. I can't accomplish a goddamn thing of any human meaning or worth until we cure ourselves of slavery and end this pestilential war. Yes. This amendment is that cure for the fate of human dignity in our hands. See the here and now. That's the hardest thing. The only thing that accounts. Wow. Love this. Not only of the millions now in bondage, but of unborn millions to come. Two votes stand in its way. These votes must be procured. You got a night and a day and a night, several perfectly good hours. Now get the hell out of here and get them. But how? I am the president of the United States of America, clothed in immense power. You will procure me these votes. <laughs> Stop naysaying and do the work. Oh, who are these people? We welcome you, ladies and gentlemen, first in the history of this people's chamber. Oh. To your house. Wow. On the matter of the joint resolution before us presenting a 13th Amendment to our national constitution, today we will vote. Confirmation of what previously has been merely rumored, that commissioners have indeed come north and ought to have arrived by now in Washington City bearing an offer of immediate cessation of our civil war. I don't, I have no idea where they are or if they've arrived. Lincoln's hiding them. The conservative faction of border and Western Republicans cannot approve this amendment about which we harbor grave doubts. 
if a peace offer is being held hostage to its success. I second the motion to postpone. Oh no. What's he doing? My god, look how white it is. It's beautiful. You just walk into the White House. This is precisely what Mr. Wood wishes me to respond to. Yes, sir. Give this to Mr. Ashley. I have to say, Mr. Lincoln, that making false representation to Congress is... It's, 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 it's impeachable. I've, I've made no such false representation. Please deliver that to Mr. Ashley. So far as I know, there are no peace commissioners in the city, nor are there likely to be. That means nothing. He's saying in the city. Or aren't there? They're in Virginia. Mr. Haddam, is your faction satisfied? The conservative Republican faction satisfied? And we thank Mr. Lincoln. I move to table Mr. Wood's motion. Table. Oh, the vote is not delayed. Clerk will now the vote call will the start. roll for the voting. We begin with Connecticut. Nay. Mr. Arthur Bentley. Nay. Oh, spit buckets. Aye. What? Aye, a Republican. Mr. Josiah Burton. Dean Paul Burton is pleased to vote yay. Yeah. Mr. James Martinson. And he abstains. Oh. Wasn't he Roberts. a Democrat? Also indisposed, also abstaining. Another Democrat? Mr. Harold Hollister. 15. No. Webster Allen, Illinois, Democrat, votes no. Democrat. Mr. George Yeaman, how say you? He's thinking about it. I said I, Mr. McPherson. Oh, he votes I. <laughs> they didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Mr. Clay R. Hawkins of Ohio. God damn it, I'm voting yes. Yeah, good for him. <laughs> oh, to hell with it. Shoot me dead too. Yes. Wow, another one. <laughs> Abstention. What? Pick one. Mr. Alexander Kofroth. I vote yes. Josiah Grinnell. I vote yes. Mr. Howard Gilfoyle. Yay. John F. McKenzie. Yay. Andrew E. Fink. Nay. Mr. Oh. <laughs> I missed this time in our history. The roll call concludes. Voting is completed. Now, Mr. Clerk, please call my name. I want to cast a vote. It is highly unusual, sir. This isn't usual, Mr. Pendleton. This is history. Yeah. I, of course. Yes. The final vote. Eight absent or not voting, 56 votes against. 119 votes for, with a margin of two votes. <laughs> I am so pleased how well this film has been made. The, the bill, Mr. McPherson, may I? That's the official bill. I'll return it in the morning. Creased for harm. Who's he taking it to? Gift for you. The greatest measure of the 19th century passed by corruption aided and abetted by the purest man in America. Oh. <laughs> she is free. Oh. <laughs> oh! I wish you had been present. Read it to me again, my love. Proposed. Then adopted. Adopted. An amendment to the Constitution of the United States Section 1, Congress shall have power to enforce this amendment by appropriate legislation. Good job. <laughs> I'd like peace immediately. Yes, yeah. I'd like your states restored. This could be given me in writing. I bring that document with celerity to Jefferson Davis. Surrender won't be thought of. We'll issue for sure in writing. It will be readmitted in time to block this amendment. No. You'll not be a conquered people, Mr. Hunter. You will be citizens. Return to the laws and the guarantees of rights of the Constitution. Right. Slavery, sir. It's done. Yeah, it's done. Spare us at least these pieties. Did you defeat us with ballots? Yeah, you bet.
See, we've shown that if people can endure awful sacrifice and yet cohere, mightn't that save at least the idea of democracy eventually to become worthy of? Shall we stop this bleeding? Did the city fall? Virginia again. Ugh. What we do to mankind as a whole. So cruel as we are. Once he surrenders, send his boys back to their homes. And the leaders, Jeff, and the rest of them, they escape, leave the country while my back's turned. That wouldn't upset me now. Oh. By outward appearance, you're 10 years older than you were a year ago. Yeah, that happens with presidents. I've never seen the like of it before. What I've seen today. You always knew that. Intimate and ugly. Take your victory lap. We've won the war. Now, you have to lead us out of it. Oh, there's his son. The generals are leaving the country. You've been itched to travel. Jerusalem, where David and Solomon walked. I dream of walking in that ancient city. Never going to get there. They should also look at the wretched woman by your side if they want to understand what this was truly like. We must try to be happier. Yeah. We've been so miserable for so long. <laughs> get some laughter in that house. Mr. Stevens is furious. He wants to know why you qualified it. No one heard the intelligent or the educated part. All they heard was the first time any president has ever made mention of Negro voting. I wish I'd mentioned it in a better speech. Mr. Stevens also wants to know why you didn't make a better speech. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sleep. Ah, more gloves. <laughs> he hates the gloves. I suppose it's time to go. Yep, threw the gloves down. <laughs> He's got a funny walk about him. I wonder if that's True to nature. Oh, Lord. This is the assassination, isn't it? Let the phoenix rise. The president has been shot at Ford's Theater. His poor son. So we don't know about, they don't show the assassination or anything. It's 7.22 in the morning, Saturday the 15th of April. It's all over. The president is no more. No, he belongs to the ages. I don't know enough about where he was shot. That this mighty scourge of war may speedily pass away. Yet if God wills that it continue until all the wealth piled by the bondman's 250 years of unrequited toil shall be sunk and until every drop of blood drawn with the lash shall be paid by another drawn with the sword as was said 3000 years ago so still it must be said the judgments of the lord are true and righteous altogether malice toward none charity for all to bind up the nation's wounds, care for him who shall have borne the battle, and for his widow and his orphan, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and a lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. Wow. Oh, Spielberg. Oh, <laughs> Spielberg. So good. Let's talk about it. That was Lincoln and, oh, just so well done. <laughs> I, I don't know, you know, because I don't follow movies. I don't follow the Oscars. I don't, you know, follow award ceremonies and things like that. So I don't know how this did in that type of situation. But I hope that it was um, applauded by the citizens of this country and given 
the scale of it and the history of it that it was awarded all possible aspects. I mean, the, the man that played Lincoln, I don't know who it was, but what a fantastic job portraying such an iconic role. And Spielberg, oh. <laughs> How can you not love his work? Hmm. I know a few people. I think I knew like four or five different people throughout this film. But I'm just so thankful to my Patreons for choosing this movie for me to watch. It was a historic time, historic vote. And uh, even to this day, we have a lot of work to do. I missed the Republican Party of old. I am a Republican. I am an old Republican. I am a Reagan-type Republican, uh, Bush Republican. I am not part of this new type of... Uh, I don't know. I think we've just lost view of what our party is supposed to be and what's supposed to represent. But I'm still an R for now. But it's just very hard to be an R right now. It really is. <laughs> I wish that our country as a whole would go back to some semblance of treating each other with care and kindness instead of hate. And know that no matter if you're a D or an R, that you're a citizen of this nation and you should be treated fairly. No matter what initial you go by. That you should be represented fairly. And it's not about the money. And it's not about throwing threats or throwing vengeance. It's about finding a middle ground. That is what democracy is. It is negotiating. It is setting aside your hatred or dislike, whatever words you want to use, for the betterment of the people as a whole. That is what democracy is about. It is not about holding grudges till the end of time. It is about finding the path that is best for all, not best for you. And I think we've lost sight of that a bit. I really hope we find it again. I absolutely adore the writing in this. It's just, oh, how could you watch this film and not love history? It was very, very good. I loved it, heart and soul. So thank you to my Patreons. Thank you to all of you for watching and subscribing and if you enjoyed this reaction please like the channel it really does help it really does tell your friends to come and watch and you know hopefully get a laugh or two not so much in this one but in many of my others so thank you to my patreon for picking this for the political slash presidential poll and thank you to all of you or whoever you are, whether you're a D or an R or otherwise, just be thankful that you live in a free nation. Be thankful for all around you, the people that deliver your gasoline, the people that pick up your trash, 
the people that, you know, clean the streets, your plumbers, electricians, carpenters, the people that are sitting in offices working on computers, and a bazillion other jobs. They're just like you. It's the same people. They have the same goals in life. Find a good job. Take care of themselves and their family. You know, enjoy life. They have the same goals as you. But never forget that you are awesome. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.